Justin from Justin's Final Feud, and today I wanted to go over progressive overload. I think that, especially from new lifters, this idea is misunderstood, and it's really simplified down to just adding more weight or more load to whatever they're doing. So, you know, if you're doing a bench press, you're adding, you know, tens or fives, whatever, to the weight, and you just add more weight, and that's how you progressively overload. But really, uh, to progressively overload, what we want to do is we want to increase our total work capacity. And so it's not just the weight, but it can be the number of reps that you're also doing, or the number of sets that you're doing. All of that will increase your total work capacity, and over time, help to move you forward in moving your weights. Um, and this is a little bit harder for people who are just starting because you're so primed to grow that that's really easy to do at that point. The other caveat I really need to put on here is that um, this asterisk for like a same or similar uh, time under tension, and this is more directed towards people who do sort of tempo training or the, the high intensity people who really slow the reps down. Uh, and so in that case, you're gonna obviously do uh, less reps and less sets and, and some of these people will advocate for, for one set to failure doing something like a five seconds concentric and eccentric and maybe even a hold at that point. And so, you know, comparing those work capacities with somebody who's doing explosive training uh, is really hard to do. And so if you want to do a total work capacity comparison, you really have to have sort of the same time under tension or a rep counting scheme for that. Um, just just uh, if you're interested in that. So if you're going to do uh, you know, this, there are several different types of ways to progressively overload. So you have linear, double, triple progression. And linear progression is essentially what most people start off with. It's the idea, um, you know, a lot of beginner programs have things like three sets of 10 or five sets of five. And so the only thing that's in a linear progression you're changing is the weight that you're actually trying to lift. And so this is where most people start. As a beginner, it's fine to start here. It makes your programming very easy. All you're having to worry about is the weight. The problem is after a certain amount of time, maybe about six months or so, uh, you're not always able just to get stronger, um, which is, you know, as a novice, every time you go to the gym, the next time you're stronger than you were before. And so, um, at a certain point, we need to go away from this because it's not really going to be helping us so much and we need to go into either double or triple progression. And so a double progression is simply saying, okay, um, we are going to do, let's say, an example of three sets and now we have a rep range. So something like eight to 12 reps, three to six reps, 10 to 15 reps. Sort of, and these can vary based on your individual goal. But the idea here is that you know, as you're getting out of the novice stage, uh, you also have to be pushing a lot harder, and so you're much closer to failure. And so part of the reason why this linear progression starts to break down is if you can easily do three sets of 10, that means, you know, the last set that you did, it's, you were able to do every single rep. And so that first set probably wasn't as hard. And so when you go to something like a double progression, right, let's say, you're doing a 10 to 15 rep range, and you're going pretty close to failure or to failure, then you know the first set you might do 14 reps, and your second set you might do 12 reps, and then that last set you might be struggling to get 10 or 11 reps. And so now you're able to more push yourself harder for the entire time that you're actually working out. Uh, and the way that you would progress to the next weight for something like this, uh, at least the way I tend to do it, is the first time that you hit or exceed that upper rep range. So let's say um, my first set, I was doing uh, an exercise and I did uh, 12 reps or maybe even 13 reps. Then the next set that I did, I essentially just move up the weight and then try and reset it. So all right, my second set will increase five pounds, and now I'm trying to hit at least, or trying to hit at least eight reps at that new weight. Um, and this is something that can work pretty well for you going forward, uh, but sometimes you might even want to go a triple progression or out. And I found that this to be really useful in 
how I train throughout a training block. So for instance, let's say we are doing um, something where I have a month training block. I would probably start off with three sets of eight to 12 reps, um, but I'm going to do that only for the first two weeks. And then the second two weeks, I'm going to add a, an additional set to that. And so a lot of times as you progress, it's even harder to even start adding additional reps at the end. And so you can go for a month and maybe barely add an additional rep or two in there. But if you add another set in there, even though your first couple of sets might not have much progression at all, that extra set will give additional work capacity. So for example, that you know, month uh, block that I was talking about, you do three sets for the first two weeks, four sets for the next two weeks, then maybe you do like a deload, and then you come back. Oftentimes I find that when I start back up going at the three sets again, I'm able to either be able to push the weight or I get a pretty large jump in the number of reps I can do. And so that also can be a way that you can progress uh, your total work capacity, uh, especially as you get stronger, you get more advanced, you need to have additional ways besides just um, playing with the weight that you're doing because uh, again, after a certain point, you're not going to just be able to easily add weight all the time. So I hope this helps you understand that uh, progressive overload isn't just adding weights, it's adding to our total work capacity and that can be done in reps and sets as well. Um, if you like what you see, give it a like, uh, comment down below what type of progression do you tend to use. I know that uh, I've done both triple and double progression. I'm now back to a double, but I've done triple for over a year. So anyway, hope you have a great one. Bye.